Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Welcome to the second lecture of economics, management and entrepreneurship. Today we shall discuss about market equilibrium, demand and supply. Here we shall study various things and you are expected to learn the following concepts concepts of market, demand, supply and market equilibrium. Each one of these concepts will be elaborated in terms of types of competition that exist in a market or that can exist in a market, concepts of demand function for the whole market and demand curve, how demand curve is related or is different from demand function. Similarly, we shall also discuss supply function and supply curve and so how these two are related. We shall also study shifts in demand curve and supply curve because of effects of different factors other than price. And finally, we shall find out price, demand and supply when the market is in equilibrium. So, let us study these concepts one by one. To start with, we consider certain definitions. Definitions on what a market is all about, what we mean by demand, what we mean by supply and what we mean by market equilibrium. These definitions will be definitely elaborated as we proceed in course of the lecture. First, what actually is a market? A market is a kind of arrangement whereby buyers and sellers interact to exchange various types of things such as goods, services, stocks, contracts and so on. The key things here, the key terms here are the buyers and sellers and their interaction and the way they exchange the commodities such as goods, services stocks and so on and so forth. Later we will study how the market characteristics may change because of different types of competitions that can come in a market. Second definition that we would like to give is demand, what exactly we mean by demand? Demand is basically the quantity of a commodity or the amount of a product or service that a person is willing and able to buy under a given set of conditions. 
Now, these are the two keywords willing and able. The person must be desirous of acquiring a product and must have sufficient purchasing power to be able to acquire the product. So, these are the preconditions his willingness and his ability to buy under a given set of market conditions that is the demand. Supply on the other hand is the quantity of a product or service that firms make available to the market for sale under a given set of market conditions. So, supply is basically the amount of goods or service that the enterprises in a market that is the sellers in a market supply. Now, when there is a perfect balance of demand and supply in a market, we say that the market is in equilibrium. Perfect balance means the demand equals supply. There is no excess supply and there is no scarcity of supply. Demand and supply are equal, they match with each other. Now, these are the basic definitions with which we shall proceed further. To start with, let us try to find out the different ways in which the competition can take place in a market. We say that a market can have perfect competition. In the next slide, we will give various characteristics of perfect and imperfect competitions. Imperfect competitions could be monopoly, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, bilateral monopoly, monopsony and oligopsony. We will discuss in our next slide the various characteristics of perfect and of different types of imperfect competitions that are listed here. We would like to first of all write down or rather speak about characteristics of competition types. We would like to in our first column we write down the different types of competitions that we listed in our earlier slide and in the other columns we write the various characteristics in terms of the number of buyers the number of sellers and the feature of the product, knowledge about the product and freedom of entry and exit of buyers and sellers in the market. Depending on these characteristics, we shall define and we shall explain different types of competition. To start with, let us take the condition of the case of the perfect competition. In case of perfect competition, the number of buyers is many, number of sellers is many, large number of buyers and sellers interact in the market in case of perfect competition. The product is homogeneous, we cannot distinguish one product from another. And the buyers and the sellers have perfect knowledge about the product and anybody can leave a market without buying or can enter the market for the purpose of buying. Therefore, there is complete freedom as far as the entry and exit of buyers and sellers to the market are concerned. Now, these are the different 
conditions which should exist should exist in a market to call that market a case of perfect competition. The next case is a case of monopolistic situation where there is a monopoly it means that the supplier or the seller is only one only one supplier is there to the market no other supplier exists for that product but there are a large number of buyers so naturally the situation here is different because there is a large number of buyers and only one supplier the buyer uh, the seller has got the uh, he has got the freedom of almost deciding the price the buyers really cannot put much effort uh, uh, much influence on the price of the product on the other hand in case of perfect competition the market determines what the price of a product would be no seller can influence the price at all and the other ones the the uh, feature of the product the knowledge about the product they are as they were in case of perfect competition however in case of entry freedom of entry to the market it is restricted because it is dominated by only one supplier any other supplier coming the entry is restricted not by anybody but purely because the competitor the likely competitor competitor may not have the advantage or may not actually compete with the monopoly therefore there is an artificial barrier to the entry of the competitor to the market this is a case of monopoly or monopolistic competition next we come to the case of monopolistic competition uh, the other one was monopolistic situation monopolistic competition is a case like a perfect competition where there is a large number of buyers and large number of sellers however the products are differentiated differentiated means there are different brand names they serve the same purpose the same product as far as their features are concerned but in certain respects their specifications are different and the functionalities of the product as they give the service to the customers may differ their size may be different their capacity may be different so in different brand names the same product could be sold by different suppliers so this is a case of monopolistic competition and as far as knowledge about the product or the freedom of entry and exit to the market are concerned they are same as that of perfect competition we come to the next type of competition which is oligopoly in case of oligopoly we have many buyers large number of buyers but only two or three sellers so in this case usually the product could be homogeneous or could be differentiated so there could be different cases entry is however uh, i'm sorry it's not written there the entry is mostly restricted because there are only uh, few uh, restricted entry for sellers so that's oligopoly and uh, next is bilateral monopoly in this case we have only one buyer and one seller and uh, product is homogeneous and the freedom of uh, entry is restricted completely the other two types of uh competition exist in the input market input market means in the raw material market which supply raw materials to the producers so in the input market there can be a situation of what is known as monopsony where there is only one buyer 
a large integrated steel plant let us say where the sellers are many, many ancillaries are supplying materials to the steel plant. So, this is a case of monopsony, the products could be homogeneous and the type about knowledge about the product is completely available and anybody can come in particularly the supplier can always enter the market in any number without any restriction. The other one is oligopsony which means that there are only few buyers, but many sellers and other conditions of other conditions are exactly similar to that of the case of monopsony. Now, this table gives the different types of competition that can happen that can occur in a market and their characteristics. Now, economic theories exist for different types of cases in this lecture or in this course we are not going to discuss everything, but we shall consider the case of only the case of perfect competition. With this we carry on to our next slide. The next uh, slide is about different types of demand. Basically we can categorize demand into two types one direct demand, demand for consumption. That means, once we buy, we use it and it is totally consumed. So, all consumption items such as rice, etcetera, etcetera, they are for consumption, consumer product basically. Whereas, there could be a derived demand and it is for using as input to produce goods for profit. For example, all raw materials that are supplied to different enterprises, their demand is derived demand, because that will depend on the type of product the firms produce and the demand for the products that the firms produce are basically the direct demand by consumers and depending on the production the amount of input material required by the company will be determined and that they are therefore, derived from the, the consumption demands of the consumers. Next we talk about market demand function, what we mean by the demand function demand function basically we try to find out some sort of a relationship between the quantity demanded in the market and some factors that we feel determine the demand uh, for the product. For example, it may depend on price, price of other goods or competitors goods, income of the people and so on and so forth. We then say that this is a demand function, basically demand as a function of various factors that we can think and we specify that in the form of an equation or of a graph, we call it a demand function. Demand function can exist at the level of an industry or at the level of a farm. When we talk about an industry demand, generally the demand for a product in that industry that is for all firms put together in that industry is generally influenced by general economic conditions such as the population, gross national product national income, interest rate etcetera. Whereas, the demand for a product by a particular firm will depend not only on the industry demand, but also on the price that the company fixes for its product, 
the advertisement and various promotional measures that the company takes and other such factors such as after service conditions that it provides to the to the users when the product is in service and so on and so forth. Now, in our next slides we will talk more about this demand function. This is, is an example of a demand function where we have written down an equation a linear equation showing a hypothetical case of demand depending on price P disposable income I price of a substitute product P S and the extent of advertisement expenditure that the company incurs. So, this is probably derived such an equation could be derived from actual data to be collected from the market. So, demand is unit per year, price of the product is rupees per unit, disposable income is rupees per year for the complete population, price of a substitute in terms of rupees per unit and advertisement expenditure in terms of rupees per year. Now, look at the signs some are plus some are minus. If you look at the sign associated with price P it is minus it means that as price of the product increases demand is likely to fall. So, this is shown by minus sign or rather minus sign comes because of this relationship. Similarly, if we look at disposable income I the associated sign is plus it means the direction of change in I gives rise to the same direction of change in D means as income increases demand for the product also increases. Look at P S price of a substitute if from a given condition price of a substitute increases then price for your product uh, your, the demand for your product also will increase because people will prefer more most likely they will prefer your product rather than the substitute product because it now costs more to them. And lastly advertisement if you spend more on advertisement if in general all companies spend more on advertisement then the demand for the product is likely to rise. We are talking about the demand function it means a function uh, the, the, the all the variables including price are affecting or influencing the demand and such relationship is shown in a function in an equation form. Also of in importance to notice is the value of the coefficients. The coefficients are 2, 2, 0.9 and 1.2 for these four variables. They are basically uh, one unit increase in price is expected to raise demand by two units. So, this meaning of 2, 2.9 and 1.2 are this. This means the effect of price is more because the value associated the coefficient of P and I they are very high because the associated values are 2 that are larger compared to 0 0.9 and 
So, these are certain implications of this uh, demand function. Now, to derive this demand function it is necessary to collect data and to regress the, the demand value with the values of the different variables p i p s and a to be able to estimate the value of the parameters the intercept value 10 and the coefficients of the regressors 2, 2.9 and 1.2. In course of our uh, series of lectures, we shall talk about regression in more detail where various concepts uh, will be discussed and will be clarified further. We now talk about demand curve and demand schedule. In the last slide, we talked about demand function. A demand function says demand D is a function of not only price, but several other variables. But suppose that we take only price as the causal variable that causes demand and so a relationship between demand and price and plot it then this plot is called a demand curve. A demand curve is a plot that shows the relationship between price and quantity holding effects of other factors fixed at specific levels. That means, we assume that other factors are not changing only price is changing then how demand is affected because of a change in price that we say and when we plot it we call it a demand curve and when we show values and put values in a table such as this we call it a demand schedule. When we plot it we call it a demand curve and when you show that in the form of a table we call it a demand schedule. Now, as I was telling you a demand curve shows how demand changes with only one variable and that is price. We can also draw separate demand curves showing how demand changes with price, but how when a particular some other factor changes its value from one to the other then we say that the demand curve has shifted. This we show, uh, this we shall show now, but before that there is what is known as a law of demand in the theory of economics and uh, this is called demand for a product is an inverse function of its own price. That means, as price increases demand falls and as price reduces demand rises. This inverse relationship between demand and price is called the law of demand in economic theory. We now show two examples of demand curve. We saw here the first curve shows how demand changes with price. We saw here that as price reduces, as price reduces, demand rises, or as price increases, demand falls. So, this is that inverse relationship or it has a negative trend between price and demand. And in this diagram we show suppose that some other factor such as income in the country has gone up. 
So, if the general income level of population in a country goes up, then the demand curve will be shifted to the right or if it comes down, then this demand curve will be shift shifted to the left. This is how effect of some other factor other than price can be shown in the same graph. Now, we come to the case of supply. Supply takes place when the producers are at least able to recover the marginal cost of production. We will talk about marginal cost in more detail later, but basically they should be able to recover the additional cost of producing one unit. That means, that the price of the product at which they sell their product to the market should be equal to the incremental cost of production if they produce one unit of product. This we shall elaborate as I say later for the time being I would like to say this that supply will take place when producers are at least able to recover their marginal cost. Like demand there are several factors that affect supply. The principal factors though is the price that they realize when they sell their product. Apart from that there are other things such as the raw material price which we have written here uh, the input price the raw material price, the technology because technology will affect the cost of production or the productivity and price of substitute or other complementary goods and such other factors that can affect the supply. So, there can be large number of factors, but in economic theory and as uh, we can well realize price is the most important factor, most dominant factor that influences supply. Now, like we did in case of demand, we also would like to talk about market supply function. So, here market uh, supply function will relate the quantity supplied by all firms put together and the factors that affect it. The factors as I said will include various factors not just one and accordingly we can just as we did in case of demand in case of supply also we can have industry level supply that means, all firms in an industry supplying same or similar goods to the market to satisfy the customer demand or supply for a particular firm. So, we distinguish industry supply from firm level supply. Now, industry supply will depend on various general economic conditions and economic factors such as gross national product, interest rates, tax rates, population so on and so forth. Whereas, farm supply will not only depend on these general economic conditions, but it will also depend on such other factors like its own productivity the wage rate that they are giving, the competitors prices and so on and so forth. Now, just as we had demand function, 
Similarly, we can have supply function. In the previous case of demand function, we had assumed a linear function. Supply function in the short term can be linear, but in the long term it usually takes a log linear relationship. In this case, we have taken ln s that is log natural logarithmic of supply as equal to a constant a plus b times natural logarithm of l plus another constant c into natural logarithmic k. K and L are taken here as factors. L for labor and K for capital. Labor is usually not person, but person month or person day per year. There is a mistake here. It should be person day per year. Capital invested is rupees per year and supply is unit per year. This is a log linear relationship in economic theory such relationships are known as Cobb Douglas production function. We will discuss more about production in uh, after a, a one or two lectures in detail. But basically after a log transformation this is a linear function, this is a linear equation and therefore, we can still use multiple regression methods to estimate the parameter values a, b and c and we can make interpretations like the way we made earlier. Just as we had drawn the demand curve, similarly we can also have a supply curve and likewise we can have a supply schedule. Supply curve is a plot that shows the relationship between price of the product and the quantity supplied holding the effects of other factors fixed. So, supply curve is basically relationship between quantity supplied and the price and here also we can show the effect of another factor changing its value by shifting the supply curve just as we had done in the case of the demand curve. And although not written here a supply schedule is basically a table containing two columns where the corresponding values of quantity and price are written down in a tabular form this is a supply schedule and just as we had a demand schedule. Similar to the law of demand, we also have a law of supply that says that supply of a product is a positive function of price other variables remaining unchanged. It means that if price is the sole determinant of supply, then as price of the product in the market rises, it motivates the supplier to produce more goods and supply them 
to the market. There, therefore, there is a positive relationship between supply and price. Now, this is an example. These are two examples basically. The first one the first one shows how supply rises as price rises. As I said, as price rises, it motivates the producer or the supplier to produce and supply more quantity of goods to the market. Therefore, it has a positive trend in contrast to a negative trend that exists in the case of a demand curve. Now, in the second example, we are showing suppose that the company adopts a more productive technology that means, giving the same input it is able to produce more amount of money at a less cost. Therefore, under this situation for the same price the supply will be higher. It means that the supply curve will shift to the right. The supply curve is shifted to the right, it may also shift to the left that means, we can have a line drawn here and this case will arise for a condition let us say let us say that uh, supply uh, the, the, the wage cost has gone up. If the wage cost goes up, then the cost of production will go up. Therefore, the profit margin for the same price will come down and if the profit margin comes down, the motivation for producing more may not be there and therefore, supply may go down. So, in this situation we can have a left shift of the supply curve. Now, what we mean by market equilibrium? The market is in equilibrium when demand and supply are equal. Now, if there is an excess supply or if the supply is in shortage of the quantity demanded, then it will disturb the equilibrium, but we, we will see how it is taken care of in competitive conditions. <coughs> Now, here we are showing a case, we are superimposing the demand curve and the supply curve. You will see here that as price increases, demand falls, but supply rises. Therefore, a case will come where the demand will be equal to supply. Any change from this point will be registered by the market. For example, if the price this is the equilibrium price 
and this is the equilibrium demand and supply. If the demand for the product goes if the demand if the price goes up then the demand will fall and there will be excess supply which will reduce the price. Same thing will happen in this case when there is excess supply. If there is excess supply then price will be more the demand will come down. Therefore, any change from the equilibrium price and equilibrium demand and supply will will be negated by the perfect competition that exists in the market. Now, let us take a, an example and let us show how we to derive the equilibrium price and demand values. Let us illustrate whatever we have read with the help of an example. Now, this is the axis price axis and the quantity axis. We have plotted the demand curve which has a negative slope as you can see and this is the supply curve which has a positive slope as you can see. We consider this point as the equilibrium point the corresponding price is the equilibrium price and this is the equilibrium demand and supply value. And we say that at this point the demand and the supply are equal. Suppose we assume that the demand which has a negative slope is given by 40 minus 2 p negative slope as price increases demand falls as price reduces demand goes up. The supply curve has a positive slope we are assuming S as equal to minus 10 plus 2 p. Now, at the equilibrium point demand and supply are equal and let us call it D E and S e at equilibrium point they are equal and therefore, 40 minus 2 p will be equal to minus 10 plus 2 p and we are writing subscript E to indicate equilibrium price. Therefore, this comes here 4 p e is equal to that goes there 50 giving a value of P equal to 50 by 4 which is same as 25 by 2 rupees per unit. This is the price of the product in the equilibrium condition. The corresponding value of the demand is obtained by substituting P by 25 by 2 its equilibrium value that comes as 40 minus 2 multiplication 25 by 2. So, 2 to get cancelled 40 minus 25 is 15 units per year and putting the value of equilibrium value of 25 by 2 in this expression we get minus 10 plus 2 into 
p is equal to minus 10 plus 2 into 25 by 2 and 15 as expected this value is equal to this value and therefore, this value will be 15, 15 units per year. and this value will be 25 by 2 that comes to rupees 1250 per unit. Now, in our next class we shall show how when there is a supply excess or supply scarcity the market is so made that it will negate the changes and brings back the supply to its equilibrium condition rather than continue to operate in an excess or a scarcity situation. Thank you very much.